Hallelujah. Thank you for the honor to be with you. I leaned over to Brother Morgan and I, I mean Brother uh, Daryl Johns, and I said, you have any idea what an awesome privilege and responsibility it is to preach to hundreds of missionaries? I feel like I'm a home front warrior and you're the real front warrior. And I am just honored. And all you sweet people, can't say enough for all the wonderful ministry. Uh, whew, man, last night, I think Mike Williams and Wayne Huntley broke their bat. I don't think... I don't think they even got a tape that'll go that far. Brother Tenney today, dear God, and Sister Mangan, thank you so much. It's been a while since I've been stabbed right in my heart. <laughs> I'm still bleeding. Whew. And then you come along. Jesus, have mercy. I'm going to quit this stuff and go get an honest job is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Mike, Best I ever heard you in all my life. God have mercy. What a message. And I, uh, I have something I need to say. I feel like the Lord has dealt with me and I want to help you. I have no negative stuff to say. I feel like I have an uplifting word from the Lord. And, uh, and, I, and I just need to just... Just predicate what I'm fixing to say with this. God, I'm persuaded. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I've been wrong lots of times. I feel God wants to make a sweep in the house while I speak. While I speak. Because a lot of times you, you let your faith sit on the floor until it's time for the altar call. And I feel like God wants to make the altar call while I'm speaking. And so if you can release your faith. God will heal supernaturally if you can just reach out while I'm talking instead of just waiting. Because, you know, the, the dimension of faith is like, is like the jet stream. If you, here's the jet stream. Here you are. Here I am. If our faith can click with the Word of God and it makes this pyramid and hits up into this jet stream, It'll just flow right into your body and everything that's anti-God will just disappear. It'll just, see, you're having a hard time already. See, we say we believe this, but we're full of hot air. We, we don't. I'm going to try it anyway. And I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just, I was in, I was in Texas last month and I was preaching at a conference and while I was sitting on the platform I know you're not supposed to say this kind of stuff but the Lord spoke to me okay and 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 he and he, and he impressed me while I was sitting there I didn't I didn't need anything new I had an hour and a half to preach right now and and it was, it was going to smoke and it did man you talk about smoking man I was smoking Whew. I almost bought my own tape I mean I was I was out there and here's what the Lord spoke to me, and I'm on a mandate from God to tell every place, everywhere I go, this statement. Here's what it is. God spoke to me and said, if you can convince the people, I will confirm my word. So don't let any devil lie to you and say you ain't got enough faith. He gave to every man, woman, boy, and girl a measure of faith. You just got to become convinced. And if you get convinced, God said, I'll confirm my word. I'll spin your head around so fast. <laughs> Woo! And then he said to me a second thing. If you can convince them of my mindset, they will experience their miracle instantly. If you can convince them that I want them well, I want them whole, I want them delivered, I want them more than they are, if you can convince them, I'll release such supernatural energy, it'll chase everything out of their body that's anti-God. You know, we have so much faith for the Holy Ghost, 
And the Holy Ghost is a greater miracle than getting healed physically. How can you have faith for the supernatural, the greatest miracle, and not have faith for a miracle that's less than that? I'm reading and you're hearing from the book of Hebrews. And I'm not trying to work anybody up. I'm just going to tell you what I feel God said to me and then we'll fine. And, uh, and, and, I am, and, and I didn't mention you, but as usual, you're the most gut-wrenching preacher I've ever heard in my life. And uh, it's, just, whew, it's just phenomenal. I don't know how your guts hold together. Now you're laughing, but you know I just told you the truth. Man, this guy. I don't know how in the name of God. Whew. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for them is confirmation to them, an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show abundant, show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. Now watch this. It's impossible for me to lie, so God just said, well, I just swear. And ain't nobody else can swear because you're fallible. But he said, I can swear because I'm perfect. And he said, I just swear by an oath, by my own holiness and my own name, it's going to happen. I just lost some of you. He said that by immutable thing that it was impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, which entereth in that within the veil. It doesn't say it enters into the veil. I've misread this for years. That, the Lord dealt with me. He said, that's not what I said. I did not say that your hope as an anchor enters into the veil. It says it enters into the that that's in the veil. Ain't but one thing in the veil, and that's him. So, so your hope is, is hung on somebody who can't change, who can't lose, who can't lie, and he's on your side. Woo! Which the forerunner is for us entered in, even Jesus made a high praise for her after the order of Mel Chesedek which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. I want to talk to you for a little while tonight on I have an anchor for my soul. Yeah. I have an anchor yeah. for my soul. Yeah. I, I have an anchor. Yeah. All hell's breaking loose, but I got an anchor. I don't know which way the economy's going, but I got an anchor. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring me, but I got an anchor right now that is attached to that which is inside the veil. And if it can't move, I can't lose. I was so wussified. You got to hear me. You got to start getting crazy about what you believe. You, you, you're, you're, you're attached to something that nothing can attack and nothing can defeat and nothing can change and nothing can alter. Now, you're not getting yet. I threw my hope over there on my journey. Faith made my hope like an anchor. Cow! And it's locked into that. And that says, all right, devil, try to move me. You can play havoc with thy boys and girls, but you ain't going to move me, and they're anchored to me. Oh, I wish I could get somebody to believe me. You're coming out of this, folks. You're coming through this, folks. 
You're going to become more than you ever imagined. Woo! Lord, bless the preaching and help me to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. I know. If you don't remember anything else I say now, remember this. In overwhelming times, we need an overruling God. If you think the United States government's going to fix yourself, you're heading for slavery. I heard the Bible say that the Egyptians asked the government for a bailout. They said, here, take our groceries. Here, take our land. Here, take our bodies. Here, you can own us. Any people dumb enough to look to any kind of government for a, for a bailout is heading for slavery. We got a God in heaven who's going to take care of this church and he's going to take care of you and he's going to take care of the kingdom. I'm sorry, I, I'm excited. I, 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 I'm just thrilled about this. I, I know my little convincing statement didn't convince you. Let me start another one. Your destiny is not up to any devil. God gave you a declaration before the devil ever showed up. He said, let's go over to the other side. And if God said we're going to the other side, no problem can stop you. Nothing can separate you. Nothing can overcome you. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Woo! Woo! Look at someone and say, he can't beat me. Oh, you know, oh too wussy for, he can't beat me. He can't take me out. I got more going for me than he's got going for him. He couldn't keep my daddy dead in the grave and he can't keep me dead in the grave. If he brought him out, he's gonna bring you out. If he brought him through, he's gonna bring you through. Can I preach a little while here? I'll slow it down for all you thinking people. I looked up in the dictionary for you so you know I'm educated. Anchor. Something that holds your ignorant carcass in place. Now you're not getting it. I wanted to get an anchor. I know you always come up with all these 8,000 people in videos and all kinds of bringing out the Ark of the Covenant and all. I never had nothing but a piece of paper. I felt like saying, my God, man, give me about a 400 pound anchor and let me just throw it over there and just see if some devil can pull me out of it. I said, I've got an anchor sure and steadfast that entereth in to the inside the veil and it locks itself to that. It doesn't lock itself to nothing. That that is the Shekinah of God. That that is the power of God. That that is the presence of God. That that is the supernatural. Woo! Some of you folks need to start tossing your anchor. You didn't sit down. I know where I'm going. An anchor, a device that holds something else secure, something that gives strength or stability or security, that which keeps from drifting or losing one's direction. Oh God, I'm fixing to flip out on you. I fish in Alaska every year and preach for my good friend, Brother Churchill in Kenai, and my wonderful fishing buddies here, Mike Mendenhall. He's the greatest salmon fishing probably in the world. And while I was praying last Sunday afternoon, I know you're not supposed to say this, but he spoke to me. Oh, he did. See, I'm not smart enough for this stuff. You can go buy them dead men's books and preach their messages. I can't do that. I need God to talk to me. Now listen, this is what he told me, Mike. This is what he told me. The Lord spoke to me and said, Jeffrey, you know when you go up and fish for those halibut in Alaska 
Remember when you go down two and three hundred foot, you drop that anchor? I said, yes, sir, I sure do. He said, now, watch. When that anchor locks hold of that ground, that captain, when he gets ready to put those 200, 150 horsepower motors on and gets ready to go, he cannot dislodge the anchor. I asked Mike today on the phone, I said, am I right, Mike? Did God talk to me? Did I make that up? He said, the Lord told you that. Watch this. This is the message. Watch. He cannot dislodge the anchor from holding it in the direction it's going unless he starts the motor and makes a giant sweep and starts going in the opposite direction. As long as you and I keep going in the right direction, that anchor is going to hold us. Truth doesn't change. The majesty of God doesn't change. The apostolic doctrine doesn't change. Don't give yourself a headache about some nincompoops that are going the other way. They dislodge their own anchor. You got to go in the opposite direction for the anchor to let go. But if you keep going in the right direction, my anchor holds. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We're living in tough times. I know that. Security has gone crazy. Financial security is upset. Employment's nuts. Bankruptcy's crazy. I know all that. Moral decay is rampant. Traditional values have been trampled on and discarded. People are losing hope. And I stand in front of you right now and say, but I have hope. My hope isn't for what I understand. My hope is for what I know. My hope is as an anchor, sure and steadfast, that entereth into that which is in the veil. You're not getting it yet. I'm going to show you something. Would you guys not get offended if I ask you to help me for a second? Would you three guys just come up here? No, you stay there, uh, Bishop. You, 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 Rev. Just stay here. Now watch. I, now watch. I got baptized in Jesus' name, got filled with the Holy Ghost, talking tongues like a Chinese laundry, had a big time, and I just put that anchor inside there, okay? Now, now my problem is, the devil wants to take me out, yeah. but my anchor's holding me. Uh -huh. Come on, discouragement. Come on, disappointment. Come on, all kinds of wicked spirits. Try to take me out. No, no, my anchor holds. I don't care how much defeat comes. I don't care how much despair comes. I don't care how low my funds get. I don't care if I got to bury some loved ones. I don't care if I've got to live with unanswered prayers. Ain't nothing can separate me from the love of God. Somebody needs to shout at me. The anchor holds. The anchor holds. I'm anchored to something that will not let me go. Woo. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, Brother Keith. My old nasty flesh, I'd like to go over here and do something stupid. I, I have a little problem here. I, I, my, my anchor's holding me. Oh, well. Come on, we'll let you go. I don't want to hurt your feelings, oh, you brilliant dolls of education. But the boat ain't holding the anchor. The anchor's holding the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The victory doesn't come from the vessel. The victory comes from the anchor. It's the anchor that's holding me steady. I'm not worried about the economy. I'm not worried about disease and devils and demons. I got something working for me that operates in the invisible world. Yeah, you can sit down. I'm going to get to my sermon in a second. In tribulation, you can triumph. In disaster, you can have deliverance. 
In despair, you can have hope. Why? Because I have an anchor that is superior to any windstorm, any storm, any situation, any devil, any demon, any sickness. I got an anchor that will hold me in overwhelming times. And the anchor's got two words on it. Now you can shout, oh, you politicians, you ready? Now we're going to shout right now. The anchor's got two words on it. And here's what makes you victorious. But God. You didn't get it yet. I, I, I would have blown my brains out, but God. I would have thrown the towel in, but God. I would have resigned my church, but God. I wanted not to pray anymore, but God. I didn't want to pay my time, but, but, but God. I didn't feel like singing and praising, but God, who is rich in mercy. I got a God who is rich in mercy and I can overcome because I got a but God. Woo! Woo! You, you can sit down. I, I, I'm, I'm just going. My, my, pro, my prophet Isaiah says, when the enemy comes in, what's the rest of it? You know what? Why don't we just do it the other way? Because there's really no punctuation in that Hebrew literature. We always say, when the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, the Lord will raise up a standard. Let's move the comma. When the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, the Lord will just raise up a standard. I said he's on your side. I said he's on my side. I said, no weapon formed against you can prosper. I said, nothing can take you out because he's on your side. I, now, now what? I, I know I'm messing with you a little bit. But you see, we have a God that intervenes and he intercepts. And I looked up the word intervene to come between, to hinder some action. To interrupt the course of action. To intercept before an accomplishment. We have a God who intervenes. Who steps in. Who upsets hell's apple cart. Now that's not a bad word, is it? No. Hell's apple cart. <laughs> I'd like to use some of the words the Bible uses. Boy, you'd really have a time. <laughs> I feel like I have a word for somebody in this building right now. Don't be frustrated. You may, you may be held and trapped by the sovereignty of God. There's too many of us holy rollers always wanting to get out of this and get out of that and deliver me here and snatch me out of here and take me out of here. I think God is looking for some people to have some dedicated diligence that'll say, well, if you don't take me out, you'll take me through. Because you, you got a greater testimony when you go through than when God snatched you out. <laughs> Too many of us are looking to escape and God's wanting us to experience. Too many of us want to be delivered and God wants us to discover. You're not getting it yet. Don't you get it? In every storm, there's a door. In every problem, there's a passageway. Every time God allows a God storm to come in your life, you better hold on. There's a voice coming out of the darkness. Now, they got in a storm and scared him to death, but here comes somebody walking on the water be because you're not going to experience the supernatural like you want until you go through some God storms. We all like to talk about how Job's story ended, but you remember that God spoke to Job from the whirlwind. Not from the hotel or Howard Johnson's or the, or, the, or the Radisson or wherever you folks like to lay before the Lord. Now you think I'm kidding you. 
See, we don't, we're being lied to by the devil that somehow God can't talk to you from a storm. That's the best place he talks from. The Bible said that Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. We don't believe God can talk unless he's in light. Man, he can light up the dark. I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time here. I really am. When Adam and Eve sinned, they should have been taken out, but God showed up. Let me try it. Let, you're wussified, folks. And when you get into a bunch of hell and trouble and problems in your life, and, and you should have been taken out, but God showed up. <laughs> and you who were dead in trespasses and sins, had he quickened? We used to have wrong natures. We did the wrong things. We did bad things. We were filled with evil. We were all messed up. We couldn't do right. Verse 4, but God. When you and I, or maybe not some of you professional holy rollers, but some of us that were sitting on bar stools and honky tonks and hell holes and movie theaters and gambling houses, when we were sitting right there and the devil wanted to take him out, God stepped in and said, you can't have her. You can't have him. And he snatched us out. Oh, I wish I had a witness now. Some of you need to start acting like you got snatched out instead of like you waltzed out. If you're going to get a breakthrough, sometimes you got to stop acting pretty. You got to stop acting cute. You got to bust a move. You got to go through the crowds. You got to pull the roof off. You got to scream like Bartimaeus. Hey, Jesus! Some deliverance, Reverend, has to come when you look bad. Sit down, sit down, I'm, I know where I'm going. I wrote all this stuff, I know where I am. Now if you think I'm gonna preach my guts out to resurrect the dead, you're out of your mind. I got a great church I can preach to, I don't need to fight with you. What God is trying to do in this conference, I think, now I could be wrong, I think, God is trying to do what he said in Psalms 138. He will perfect that which concerneth me. See, the problem is we don't have the courage to name the that. You about ready to read, Anthony? I'm not doing very good. No, oh, I'm getting killed up here. I'm and Abraham you. journeyed from thence toward south country. He's and dwelt dying. between Kadesh and Shur, and so journeyed to Gerar. You dot it. Keep going. And Abraham saith unto Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Now wait. But, wait. Wait. Go ahead. But God. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> now you're not getting it yet. Abimelech was a bad dude. He was the king. He was the hot dog. He was the big kahuna. He snatched his cats wide because the guy's a liar. That's the way people, people of God usually are. Oh, y'all, what, am I in the Bible? Is Abraham God's man? He just got a little problem. He's a liar. He's a deceiver, precious believer. See, the difference between church folks and God is church folks throw liars out. God gives them another chance. <laughs> Unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Don't let your shortcoming and your weakness define you. Say, sit down, sit down, wait a minute. I, I just want to play but with this. But God thing. came to Abimelech. No, no, wait, and, no, wait a minute. Okay. Said, he took the chick. He's going to put her in the harem. She's going to be a little play toy because, you know, he's a whoremonger. He's got the morals of a barnyard dog. You understand that? He's got all these chicks in his harem. So, so he takes... I'm sorry, did I offend some of you? Yeah. 
What do you think they're gonna do? Play pinochle? But God. Yeah, well, look, get off that okay. God stuff. I'm over here for a second. I'm gonna try it again. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my mouth. He established my going. He took me from the mire and put me in the choir. We gotta stop acting so pretty. Get up with that cool stupid, who, me? <laughs> yeah, you, you lying dog, you. You sit down, I'm sorry. Abim Abimelech took the wife. Why not? Because her husband's lying. She said, now look, you're a good looking fox and you know, you're fine. She said, let's just, let's, you know, if they know I'm your old man, they'll bump me off and take you in the sack and I mean, I'm gonna have a bad time. So, so I don't mind him taking you in the sack, just keep me alive. Great believer that he was. So, so Abimelech grabbed, now you gotta get, now maybe this doesn't do for you what it does for me. But, but in my lowest moment, Elder, in my messed up time, when I've got both my feet in my mouth, when I have a bad attitude, I'm doing something stupid, and I'm just, I'm living below the dignity of a child of God. When God ought to just write me off, he don't write me off. He challenges my enemy to let me go. He did not come and chew Abraham out. He came and chewed Abimelech out. Yeah. Why? Because your position with God doesn't stop just because you do something wrong. You, you don't stop being a child of God just because sometimes you act like a child of the devil. Am I making sense? Am I preaching good yet? Re, re, you sit out while she's going to read for me. She said, so, verse 2, verse 2. Well, we're in 3. I know, but read 2. Okay. Maybe I'm sad. Hey, I waited all week for you guys. Give me a little time here. <laughs> Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. My sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Took her. But God came Woo! to... I can't tell you. Now we're ready to run. Okay. But, but God but, came to Abimelech in a dream came by to night. Abimelech in a dream. Don't tell me Pentecostal is the only folks God can talk to. God came to Abimelech in a dream and said, Thou art but a dead man. You took some guy's wife. Now you can sit down. Go ahead. I'll get to the rest of it. Okay. You, you, go, 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 go to, I think you got verse 7. Is that we? I want verse, verse seven. And now, therefore, restore the man his wife. Now, watch this. Now, watch this. All you people on your legalistic journey into Stupidville. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, we got to kill that damn now little therefore, demon. Restore. Don't be afraid of me. <laughs> this is coming from Gainesville live. <laughs> but, Ashamed of the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the deliverance. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed what God brought me from. Hallelujah. Your testimony is your power. Excuse me, sit down. Now Read therefore me. restore the man his wife. Watch this. Restore the man. Oh, let, me, let me paraphrase it without, without damaging the word of God. Okay. Restore the liar his wife. Wait a minute. Res restore the deceiver his lie. Re restore the chicken-footed coward his wife. A and here's why I want you to give him back his wife. For he is a prophet. <laughs> he's a liar, but he's a prophet. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. God's want me to tell somebody, you do not lose your calling when you make a mistake. You do not lose your status with God when you make a mistake. You don't become less than God called you to be because you make a mistake. That's what it says, Mike. It said he is. Now, now, 
had he had our credentials, if he, you can sit down, if he'd been one of ours, we would have said, he used to be one of ours. He used to be a prophet, but we canceled his gift because we're greater than God. I said, not about canceling your fellowship card. You want to act like a fool and lose your fellowship, fine. But you're going to be hard pressed to do something that God and the devil can't do. Because the gifts and calling are without repentance. And when God calls a man to do something, he's that till he dies. God will take you that way before he'll take his gift away. I got a divided house right now. You too many politicians in this place. Well, I'm going to ask for a witness. Anybody besides me, since you've been saved, you said stuff you shouldn't have said, you thought stuff you shouldn't have thought. God didn't put you up for adoption. God didn't tear up your birth certificate. Why? Because but God is rich in mercy, and I have my victory because but God is rich in mercy. Sit down. I got a long way to go. I'm coming as fast as I can. I know it's late. You guys know what time I started. I don't know what time I started. You just, just go ahead. I'm going as fast as I can. It's our last got... night. Preach 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. Read, read that last now verse. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. Verse 17. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech. Stop. The gifts didn't stop working into him because he made a mistake. Struck fire now. We expect every time somebody speaks in tongues, gives a message, prophecy, tries to discern, have a word of knowledge, and if they mess it up, all of a sudden that they're finished. Where did you come up with that stupid? What Bible school did you graduate from? <laughs> Whoever told you that the gifts of God have to start out in perfection? Everything in our life, we have to grow into maturity. We also have to grow in operating in the gifts of the Spirit into maturity. And so, the, so he told his man, he said, go ask the liar to pray for you. And, and I'll heal your family and all your folks. So the Bible says that he went, Abimelech went. He said, hey, liar, liar, pants on fire. Would you mind if you'd pay for me, pray for me, because my women are all messed up. We ain't had no babies. I don't know how long this has been. Everybody's messed up, and, and we kind of need to have a little produce around here. Could, w w w could you pray for me, liar? Here's my head. <laughs> now watch. Watch how good the God but mercy. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bear children. Woo! God can use you again though you messed up. God can bless you again though you failed. God, God can restore your dream. He can restore your vision. He can, he can give you a new anointing. Don't let the devil tell you God's finished with you. God's not finished with you. You got a destiny. You got a work to accomplish. more than I am at this moment. I've got an anchor, sure and steadfast, that's holding me. Let me, let me just preach a few more minutes. I, I don't, I don't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> you got the next scripture? Read, read for me. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You know who he's talking about? Jacob has run away. He's been there 20 years. He's got his wives. He worked for 14 years. He's changed his wages 10 times. Dirtbag father-in-law. <laughs> Cheated him. I think that's the funniest picture in the whole Bible. Two of the biggest crooks on the same plantation. <laughs> I think God thought that was funny. I thought he hit that. Watch this. He's going to scam him right now. Well, watch, watch Jacob. He's a dirtbag. You watch. He's going to scam him. And God just watching the chess game. 
too finally. He said, it's time to get out of here, Jake. Grab your stuff, grab your gals, and hit the road. He takes off hoofing. The Bible says he's been gone days. Laban finds out that he's left, and Laban is a lowlife, and Laban chases him. Now watch, he chases him, and he says, don't you know it's in my power to hurt you? Watch, watch what Laban says. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight. Saying, take thy heed. Before your enemy can do to you what he wants to do, there is a God in heaven that can intercept him and interrupt him and intervene for you. I have an anchor that says, but God. Somebody shout at me, but God. But God. Now shout at the devil, but God. You thought you had me, but God took me out. You thought you could take me, but God said you can't have me. You thought I was going to die, but God said I'm going to live. I need to preach a little longer. Read on. I got another scripture. Read on. Uh, Where are we? Uh, I got lost. In case Uh, you don't know it. Uh, You're going to Strong's Exhausted Concordance like I did. And all you got to do is look up the word but. (laughs) B-U-T. That's it. But. Just look up the word but. It's about two and a half pages. It's a boring bunch of mess. (laughs) Because, you know, Strong's Exhausted Concordance is written in mini print. And it's like a scripture. Every word in the scripture is but. If you look it up you will find there are over 200 references in the scripture with this cliche, but God. Uh. But God. But, but God. There's a but God for every time you got your butt. <laughs> but I can't do it. But they don't love me. But the ties is low. But I can't give the missions. But every time you got your stupid little but this and but that, God steps in and says, but God. Yeah. Who's got a bigger checkbook than you? Who's got more power than you? Who's almighty? Who's all glorious? Who's all? And he's on my side. Thus have I been here 20 years in the house. Go ahead. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters yeah. and six years for thy cattle. Keep reading. And thou hast changed my wages 10 times. Now watch this. Except the God of my father. Wait a minute. That word could be removed and put in there but God. Because he said, except the God of my fathers that chewed your ignorant carcass out last night, you'd have sent me away just empty, you dirtbag. But my God showed up and went, cut it out. You think I'm kidding you, but there's sometimes when God will grab a hold of your adversary when he's about ready to drive you out of your mind. He'll step up in that guy and say, you better get your nasty hands off her. You better get your neck. Uh, I said, I got a God that's on my side. I got an anchor, sure and steadfast, that entering into that which is in the veil. Well, the doctor said, you ain't going to get over the disease. But God said, I am the Lord that healeth it. But the di- oh, I feel like. But the diagnosis said, you're not coming out. But God said, I'll bring you out. I'll bring you out. I'll bring you through. I'll make you to become. I'm not trying to play the audience. I'm trying to help the audience. You got to leave this thing in a few minutes going home and say, I don't care what kind of hell is going on. I don't care how many saints left. I don't care how many idiots are running their mouths and shooting me down, damning and condemning the best I'm trying to do. All I can walk in and say, well, but God is for me. Are you hearing me, John? And if God be for me, it don't matter who or what is against me. Can I preach a few more minutes? Hour. Sit down, please. I'm not trying to be offensive. I know I'm the, I'm the joke of this movement. I understand all that. 
and I'm a crude dude and I got no class and I understand all that. But I'm as sincere and as honest as I can be. I fight devils and spirits of despair and the spirits of discouragement. Would you get insulted if I brought you up here for a second? Come on, you're, you're full grown. Come here. Stand right here. Hey, get your twin brother up here. Come here. We got the round mound of sound up here. No, not you. That big guy back there. Well, you. Now, despair, defeat, disillusionment, unfulfilled expectations, dashed dreams, frustrations, no finance. Now, you, now you just try to take me over there. But remember, I'm anchored over here. Just, just try to move me. No, no. I, I got my anchor ain't gonna let me go. I may fall down, but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna stay down. You just keep trying to mess with. Come on, defeat. Get over here, rotund one. Get over here. And just, and just no, go that way, foolish. Go that way. My, this guy's the superintendent. I wonder where this district's going. Come on, hey. Get up here. Get up here, Mitchell. Get up here, Martin. I don't care if you're a politician or not. Get up here. Just get, just get next to them, folks. I got an anchor. Come on, Mike. Hold on to my hand. I got an anchor. And they're, they're trying to take me out, but they can't take me out because the anchor holds. The anchor holds. You, it's not me. It's not my faith. It's the power of the anchor. It's the power of the... Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. It's not my faith. It's not my spirituality. It's the anchor. You're going home from this place. You're going to your field of labor. You got to tell yourself, I got an anchor. I got an anchor sure and steadfast. I got an anchor against devils. I got an anchor against disease. I got an anchor against defeat. I got an anchor against despair. You can sit down. I'm trying to get there. I got the next scripture. I gave them to you in a row. It'll be easy. I just about had you back in Louisiana That's all right. preaching our camp till you did that. And Joseph. And Joseph, master, took him and put him in the prison. Now watch this. Wait a minute. And for all you folks that are going through dark days and despair and discouragement, wait a minute. And the hardest thing to deal with is unfair treatment and injustice uh -huh. and unexplainable circumstances. Please, somebody hear me right now. Uh -huh. Joseph was a godly man. He was a God-fearing boy. But he, but he got stuck in the sovereignty of God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I felt I struck fire just then. Somebody, somehow, you're stuck in the, in the, in the absolute majesty of God's sovereignty. And you don't know why he isn't doing it, why he isn't taking you out. He may be taking you through rather than taking you out. He's going to get more glory when you get through this thing than he would get if he just snatched you out of all. Now, now watch this. And, and, and they put, and Joseph, Joseph Mas put Joseph in the prison. And took him and put him in the prison, a now, place where the king's prisoners were bound. Here we go. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. And showed him mercy and, and gave granted him favor. favor. So even in your dungeon, of, even in your dark place, even in your disaster, God can be with you and God can bless you and God can give you favor, though He does not take you out of your situation. Am I making sense? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Bob, yeah, I didn't do nothing bad. Okay. I know, I, I just, I got a word from the Lord to help somebody. I'm not trying to blow off like I'm some big deal. I'm trying to help you. God spoke to me. Uh, he said, the people are struggling. They're going through unanswered prayers and situations and circumstances. Tell them over and over again, the anchor holds. Yes. The only way you can dislodge the anchor is to go in a different direction.
Read on, Rev. And Jacob, their father, said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my children. You're doing wonderful. Joseph is not. Simeon is not. And ye will take Benjamin take away. away. Ben You're going to take Benjamin away too? All these things are against me. Stop. Now I want to challenge the whole UPC. All these things are not all things. You didn't hear me. All these things are not all things. There is a God in heaven that knows what you're going through. There is a God in glory that is taking care of the steps of a righteous person. That went over like a lead balloon. He said, all these things are against me. Listen to me. Sit, sit down. Listen to me. Here's what the problem with Jacob is. He's misreading his situation by the obvious facts only. Joseph's dead. Oh, hold it. Newsflash. Joseph's the prime minister of Egypt. Now you, you missed that one. I'll, I'll slow it down for you educated folks. He's got the keys in the corn crib in his girdle. Now, you're not getting it yet. He's dispensing the grocery while you're sucking your thumb. Said, so Joseph is not. Who told you that? You know, he thinks Joe's dead, and Joe is the head knocker in Egypt. No, what you what? The devil wants to tell you Jesus is dead. Oh, no, he's the boss. Just because you can't see him, don't mean he ain't here. Am I, am I boring you? Well, stay, stay right where you are. Watch what he says. Joseph is dead. Now what? And Simeon is not. Stupid man. He doesn't understand that right now Simeon is held in jail by a brother who loves him and is going to bless him and favor him. Yeah. yeah. See, it's what we don't know that the adversary wants to capitalize on. For our light affliction is but for a moment, which worketh for us a far more exceeding weight and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. When your storm is starting to rock your boat, take a look inside the veil and see what it's hung on to. You got to start looking in the spirit world. You can't keep getting, you can't keep taking your notices from what is obvious. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought I was going to preach better. I'm so sorry. He said, and you could take Benjamin away from me. Wait a minute. Stay. I know what I'm doing. Okay. He, he, I, I, trust I do you this did. for a living. Just, <laughs> just, you're a wonderful man. Just hold on. He said, and you're going to take Benjamin from me. What he doesn't know is Benjamin is longed for by a brother, his older brother, that loves him and wants to kiss him, and bless him, and favor him, and enrich him, and make him more than he is. Now watch this. This is powerful. This is the darkest moment in Jacob's life. And he's coming up with the wrong conclusions. Now watch this. This is so powerful. He's about ready to break dawn of the brightest day in his life. Because he's got a boy down in Egypt who's going to save his ignorant carcass. He thinks he's bumped off and dead. I read this in a book. I wish I was smart enough to figure this out. It said there are certain tropical birds that when they want to make them learn how to sing, they cover the cage with a cloth and let the bird stay in total darkness. And the darkness gives birth to the song. I don't know how dark you are in your situation right now. God is telling somebody... Learn to whistle. Learn to sing. L -l Learn to make a melody in your heart. You got to hear me. D don't let the darkness dominate you. Don't let the dark. God has got a purpose for your darkness. God has got a design for your darkness. God. He wants to produce music out of your life. Stop cursing the dark cage and learn how to make music. Am I making sense yet? A lot of I read a story about a, a man whose name was Sheman. And I'm not much in art. And uh, 
but he was a famous artist in France. His name was Schumann. And he made a wonderful statement in his book, and I thought it was so apropos for this service right now. He said, there are some pictures that I paint that in order to make them everything I want them to be, it requires that I paint on a dark day. Some paintings require less light. You have no idea what kind of portrait God's trying to make out of your life. But he's the master artist. He's the master craftsman. And he might be looking at us right now and saying, I need to add a little something to that portrait. I need to turn the lights down lower. And here we are fussing and cussing about because it's dark. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. When Nebuchadnezzar had his dream in Daniel 2 and none of the magicians and the, sor the sorcerers and the soothsayers could figure out the dream, they got a hold of Daniel and Daniel makes this awesome statement. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and knows what's coming in the last days. Sometimes when you're in your lowest spot, I'll try to finish because you're kind of snoring right now. When you're in your lowest spot, you need to throw your foot down and say, but there is a God in heaven who knows, who cares, who loves, who heals, who delivers, who blesses, who makes me more than I am. But there is, a, I wish somebody shouted at me, but there is a God in heaven. I feel like telling somebody now, well, hell's driving you crazy, but heaven is on your side. The devil's trying to steal your soul, but heaven is on your side. You got one more scripture for me? What, what, what do you got now? And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons. That's the one you oh, want? Oh, no, I want, I want, I want, I want. Uh, you want to go to uh, Psalm? Yeah, I want, I want, I want to go to Psalms. I okay, to let's Psalms. flip to Psalms. Give Psalm. me just a few minutes. You guys just keep your snoring up. Everything's fine. When I cry unto thee. Wait a minute. Now watch. Now you understand. We're putting these two, two together. Now if you folks don't shout on this one, we're going home. <laughs> really? I'm not here to entertain you. I'm trying to help you. Watch. He said, all these things are against me. Sounds like Pentecost. <laughs> My paper cup. Oh, all these things are against me. And God's saying, but not all these things. You got to broaden your focus. These things are against you, but he is not against you. And the angels are not against you. And the blood is not against you. And the word is not against you. And the glory world is not against you. And the Holy Ghost is not against you. Don't take your focus for your faith on these things. Now, I got my towel here. I had one made for me. It says, just give me five more minutes. <laughs> so I don't need to ask you. I'm just going to read it. I just need five more minutes, okay? <laughs> read for me, right? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm going to get nasty right now. Mm. God is almighty. I don't know what that means, but he's almighty. He ain't never made nothing with his mouth shut, and you think you're going to get an answer with yours shut. Did you hear me? I heard ten, it. Ten times in Genesis 1. That's the original Ten Commandments. See, we've had Ten Commandments three times. In Genesis 1, there's ten times, and then twice in Exodus, there's, there's Ten Commandments. But the first Ten Commandments ain't never been violated because the Creator made them. Ten times he said, let there be, 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 let there be. Because death and life's in the power of the tongue. And then we come to a Pentecostal church, and if we don't hit come a hokey, oh, I feel something. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You don't have to feel nothing to just say, God is good, and God is great, and God is wonderful, and God loves me, and God's on my side. We better stop always having to wait. You got to open your mouth and say something because nothing in the spirit world stops until you open your mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I 
I will say of the Lord, he is my rock and my fortress, my refuge, my high tower. No, I'm going to stop for 60 seconds. You say something. You're releasing a catalyst for the supernatural. You're releasing something to let the supernatural go. If you can believe God right now, God will heal you if you just throw your faith up in the air. Tell that pain to go. Tell that cancer to shut its mouth. Tell that diabetes you can't work here no more. Come on. You're made like your creator and your creator is a speaking God. Speak. Bartimaeus wouldn't have got healed if he hadn't opened his mouth. I want to go another minute. I want to go another minute. I'm telling you, there's healing in the house right now. There's an answer right now. Lift your hearts up. Lift your hands up. Lift your voices up. Tell him what you want. Get convinced that he wants to heal you and bless you and save you. And God said, if I can convince you, he will confirm his word. <laughs> Glory. 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 Keep going, keep going. It's not important for me to keep preaching. It is important for you to be blessed. It is important for you to be helped. It is important for you to be strengthened. It is val it's valuable for you to be healed. The Holy Ghost is moving. The Holy Ghost is moving. The Holy Ghost is moving. Come on, reach up with your faith and drill it down. God told me, if you can get convinced, I will confirm my word. I don't need to finish the message. God wants to break in on us. God wants to help us right now. Come on, it's your moment right now. It's your moment right now. We're making contact. We're making contact. Keep going. Ever since I got to the conference, I've had a diverticulitis attack and I took more But God, but God who is rich in mercy, but there is a God in heaven who sees where I am. He knows where I'm going. He knows how much pressure I'm underneath, but there is a God in heaven. And the Bible said, Psalms 56 and 9, but this I know, God is for me.
but God, but God. We got a God that can turn the situation around. We got a God that can give you passion and a burden and courage and faith and healing and deliverance. Loose your faith. One man just told me he's had two and a half days of diverticulitis, doubled over with pain. He said, while you was preaching, I took your word. If I could get convinced, God would confirm it. He said, all the pain has left my body. Nobody had to pray for him. You can pray for yourself. You can release your faith for yourself. Come on, you got an anchor that reaches into the supernatural. You got an anchor. But God is faithful who will not let you be tried and tested beyond what you can endure. But God is faithful. Job said, I can't find the Lord, but he knows the way that I take. There's a doorway in your storm. There's a passageway in your storm. Believe God's coming to you. Listen for the voice. Stretch your hand. He's on his way towards you. There's a miracle heading towards you right now. Don't let any devil tell you it's not so. He's not the Lord of the storms. God is the Lord of the storm. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In overwhelming times, we need an overruling God, and we've got a God that can overrule anything. rich in mercy healing is a mercy not just forgiveness healing is a mercy but God who is rich in mercy Don't die out. Just a few more minutes. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got any kind of pain in your body? You got growths in your body? Put your hand on your body. Put your hand on your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We take authority and dominion over sickness and disease over lying devils and lying spirits. I speak to that sickness to leave. I command that disease to stop its growth, stop its hold. I loose the life of Jesus Christ into your mortal body.
Hallelujah. 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 Don't be afraid to pray. Don't be afraid to speak. Don't be afraid to do it. This is our right. This is our heritage. It's a gift to us from God. We need to expect the supernatural. We need to expect the miraculous. You got to keep telling yourself, even when it doesn't seem to work, but God. When it doesn't seem to disappear, but God. I'm telling you, if God is on our side, if God be for us, it does not matter who or what is against us. You have need of patience after you've done the will of God that you might inherit the promise and get the reward. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Did not Jesus say, ought not Christ to have suffered these things that he might enter into his glory? The Lord spoke to me about that and said, there is a glory that every one of my children has, but it takes suffering and negative things and dark storms to enter into it. Jesus' glory required the whipping post and Calvary and death and resurrection. What is your glory waiting on? Hallelujah. 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 Come on. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, you got to tell yourself that when all hells broke loose, when nothing makes sense, when everything's going crazy, you can still have to say, yeah, but God is for me. Well, this is against me. Yeah, but God is for me. Yeah, but these folks are against me. But God is for me. Yeah, well, the sickness said, but God is for me. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, don't die. Don't die. Come on. Resurrect a little more praise, a little more worship, a little more desperation. Some of you are so close to breaking through to what you need from God. Come on. Just a few more moments. Just a few more moments. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Ha Jesus. Yes, Jesus. But the Lord is my shield. But the Lord is my glory. But the Lord is the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. 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 The enemy surrounded Hezekiah, but God sent an angel. The enemy invaded Jehoshaphat, but God sent an angel. And that God is on your side. There's no way for you to lose. Hallelujah. 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 Why don't you reach over and grab a hold of somebody and bless them? Psalms 129 and 8 says, And they that go by do not say, We bless you in the name of the Lord. But you just say to them, I bless you in the name of the Lord. I bless you with the blessing of God that makes rich and adds no sorrow. I bless you. I said, I bless you in the name of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord be upon thee. The blessing of the Lord be upon thee.
glory. The anchor holds. The anchor holds. The anchor holds. People will become convinced. I will confirm my word. Ask God to help you to become convinced that God wants to fix it, that God wants to bless it, that God's going to do it. His confirmation is waiting on whether you'll be convinced or not.